spawn generators, and now we can see it covers the whole map. So you can see it just spawned up until here, where the next box is. Then it takes, there's a delay of five seconds, and in the five seconds it just starts the second one, and it's gonna spawn here. Hey guys, Mars Freeman is here. I think PCG has been one of the most exciting things that Unreal Engine has released in a very long time. Because for people like more technical people, I think it's a game changer and it lets you to create amazing environments by coding instead of going and painting the trees and other stuff. But currently, where the PCG is at, uh, one of the biggest things, I think, for me playing around is actually how you can generate something for big, big, big worlds. Because if you want to make something small scene, then yes, you can just dump everything in, generate, and it's called cool but when you once you want to generate something for huge maps and want to let's say cover the whole map with, with trees for example for 4k 8k or even bigger maps uh, usually you run into the crashes or you need to split these pcg graphs into smaller ones and just regenerate so i came up with a solution that lets me spawn multiple biomes as i said in my environment so i can have like in you know, a forest different kind of forests i can have jungle uh, bamboo forest and I also want to procedurally spawn buildings and other stuff so the more I can actually procedurally spawn the better it is so I can reuse it scale the map bigger maps smaller maps and kind of I just want to create a bunch of templates that can just reuse and really explore that procedurally generated content and so I made a simple blueprint which basically gonna split all the PCG that PCG huge graph into the smaller ones and then it spawns one by one. So we're just gonna grab this PCG manager and all I do is just drop it in a corner. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna turn on debug so I can see this debug box. And basically this is gonna be kind of like the master uh, collision box size and it's gonna size every, every other box based on this one. Select the box, let's set it to something like, everything could be 5,000. And then what I can do is I have a count, so the X and Y, and I can put, I can just disable this and I can put like something like, let's say five, let's take a look. And there is a um, spawn generators. So I spawn it, we need a few more to cover it. What I can do, I just can press clear generators, put like seven by seven, spawn generators, and now we can see it covers the whole map. And this is actually very, kind of there's a multiple uses I can just keep them after the spawning I can just delete them if I want to but they are useful for example if I'm gonna put some kind of NPCs animals and if the players are not in that zone I can despawn them and I can despawn other things so this this can have multiple purposes but I just created it right now for PCG spawning and then all we need to do is actually press start biome generator so you can see it just spawned up until here, where the next box is. Then it takes, there's a delay of five seconds, and in the five seconds it just starts the second one, and it's gonna spawn here. Actually made a very simple blueprint. So let's go here. So spawning generators, it's kind of very simple, it's just, first it clears out generators, so it kind of like deletes existing spawners and resets the variables. Then I have four, two four loops, so the first one and the second one, which basically where we set up amount how many boxes we want. Then after the second first loop initialize the second one and then go we go here, we get this debug debug box, which is here. We get its world location and we are getting the box extents. So basically we're just getting the box size so we can resize and align everything based on that. Everything is get multiplied by two because the pivot is in the center. And then we are getting this and we are just multiplying by the index. So they move accordingly. And we are adding on top of that the original location of the box. For example, the best thing is just to put it in the up corner. And then I'm just spawning an actor. I'm putting everything in and then I have that multi beam spam spawner. I'm adding it to the array resizing them to the existing collision box, this debug one, so they're all uniform and the same size and it's, so it's just easier. After that, I have start biome generator, which is starts this, and I can explain this one second, and this is basically just a double check to make sure that we need to actually generate something. 
the approach I took is this is like not impacting the gameplay at all. It's not going to be using gameplay. It's just something that I'm going to be generating now in the editor. So the difficult part is one of the ways how you can do is just making a tick in a gameplay. You could just make, make this all logic based on the tick and it's easy, but the tick doesn't work in editor. So unless I press play and I generate it at a runtime. So what I did is there's multiple ways actually how you can cheat the tick in Unreal Engine. So what I did is I used the live link component, which comes from uh, that live link plugin. I think it's from the this one probably. No, one of the live link plugins it comes from. If we click here, we can see there's a tick and we can set the interval how many times we want to tick. So this enables that tick. Uh, then I have another Boolean just in case if for some reason I have forgot this one so it doesn't start to generate. So I have this Boolean here, which again, I can just double check that it's disabled. Um, yeah, this is just a reminder for disabling the link to thick so it doesn't thick for no reason. Then I have this, it basically checks the index. So the current index, it's it starts from the zero and the last one gonna be one less than equal of the length of the ar array. So. So it checks that. So this basically just checks if all the generators are used. If it is, then we are resetting this one to false, resetting current index, and we are turning off the tick for this one. But if it's true, if we need to still generate, then we go into the branch and we are checking if it's generating. So if that particular index is already started the generation process. So if it's not, then we are going to do false. We are setting this to true and we are basically using generate local from the PCG. So from this one. So basically we are triggering this and we are kind of triggering this button over here, which says generate. That's all what it does. Um, so on the next loop, when we come back, so obviously now since this Boolean is set to true, we are going up here. And cool thing is PCG graphs has a check to check if they are still in generation process and if the generation is done. So I'm getting this Boolean from that. And all I do here is just checking if that particular generator is done generating. So if it's not, it keeps looping and looping till it is. And on the, on the true, I just set generating to false and I'm just adding extra index. And it just goes back and it goes through all the how many generators I spawn, I was 64. And in this way, I'm actually able to successfully spawn 8K map or you can spawn any because it's gonna just spawn each small cube and you can just adjust the size based on you know your PC performance. I set mine to 5000. You can set even to the smaller ones. It's just going to take a bit longer time, but you know, you can set it overnight. And then I just have this one that spawns instances. So all it's going to do is if we go back to this PC manager and now I can just press set instances. So this replace to the PCG stamps. I can clear generators and we have this. Now it's a walkable ready environment and you can spawn them basically in any size of the map. And also cool thing about this is, for example, if I just need to adjust one particular area, right? So if we go back to this one and I'm just gonna be spawn generators, let's say, you know, only this, I, I don't like how it is here and I wanna make some kind of different change. I can just set it here, click this one and just manually generate that one the one i want that's why it's so cool that there is a stamps and there it's everything is split so you don't actually need to regenerate absolutely everything map especially because i have multi-bio environment and let's say i make a change just for the jungle so i can just delete the jungle sections and i can just regenerate the jungle ones i'm probably gonna make some kind of way the, the next probably upgrade gonna be some kind of tick box where I can actually uh, check which indexes 
I want to regenerate. I think that's going to be like kind of that next step. So in case if let's say I have a, I want to regenerate the whole jungle. So it means I have one, two, three, four, five boxes. So I'm just going to make some kind of checkbox, which indexes I want to regenerate. And then I'm going to add some numbers that identifies each box. So I know which is which and I can just check them. So that's probably going to be the next step for the generator. So as a base, I'm going to use this graph from Electric Dreams. And the reason I'm using is because there's already set up the parameters to adjusting like the trees, uh, clearings, the rocks and all that. So I'm just modifying this one, adding my own stuff, my own settings to fit my multi-biome uh, spawning. So this is kind of going to be the core master material, master PCG graph that if I need to make adjustments, it's going to make adjustments for all of them. So what basically I did, the biggest adjustment is all these entry points for settings and everything else, I put it as an input and also for like assemblies and stuff like that. So whatever is an input, it's going to come from here. And then all this where was uh, static, static mesh spawners, I actually put everything as an output outside so I can use it for reuse it for a jungle, use it for a forest and wherever. And so if you go to the forest, then that's exactly how it looks. So this is that master PCG graph and I'm just basically reusing. So I'm getting this. So it starts with input. There is a point filter, which basically filters the forest. And then I have the actor property right here. So it comes to forest settings. So it reads, uh, if you see here, I have like forest, jungle, puddle. So it knows which one to pick up. And then I have outputs. So the hero three comes here and I'm using hero mesh spawner right here. And then I'm just spawning whatever I need. And it's the same for rest of them. And then I just hook it up here, like in one sequence all spawning. So forest, jungle, puddle, so it goes here, here, it checks if it's a forest. If it's not, then here it takes the output filter to the output and it just goes to the next one and the next one and to the next one. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. I hope this video helped with your PCG projects. If it did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Project file is going to be in the Discord and see you next time. Bye.